Good morning. Today's message will come from the book of Psalms, 150 number Psalms. The last book in the book of Psalms, Psalms 150. And I'll read to you the first sentence of each um, of each uh, verse and then the last uh, sentence I'll read completely. Psalms 150. Praise ye the Lord. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the temporal and dance. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Let everything that had breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. This morning I want to talk a little while and use for a subject this morning. Let everything that had breath praise the Lord. Let everything that had breath praise the Lord. As children of God, we can rest assured knowing that God is worthy to be praised. We can rest assured knowing that God has and will continue to do many things in our life that equal praise. This morning, we already should have already woke up praising God. Last night, went to bed praising God because he's worthy to be praised. Regardless of what we're going through or who we are, how long we've been in it, he's worthy to be praised. All that God do. All that God has done, and if tomorrow come, still yet willing to do, God is worthy to be praised. If there's anybody that need to be praised today, it's not me. It's not others. It's not those that we think are doing so much in our lives, our, our jobs, and our homes, and our cars, and those we're knowing for such a long time. But all praise, glory, and honor belongs to God. For well, as I said earlier, not for all for all that he have done. And as I said today and, and all that he does for us. And if tomorrow come all that God can and will do in our lives. Not only in our lives, but the lives of our family, lives of others, even in the lives of our enemies. We have to pray for those that despise the use for us and all that he can do in the world today. God is worthy to be praised. When God gave me that message today, what a better world we will be in today. What better condition our world will be in today. What better condition our families, our homes, our churches, uh, and the whole world will be in if we, if everything that had breath was praising God. Because I'm a firm believer and I know that, you know, when we praise God, something happened. You know, God want all the praise. God want the glory. God want the honor. And he wanted so much, he said, I am a jealous God. We need to be praising God. What a difference. What a difference we would be. I would be, you would be, if everybody was praising the Lord. I stopped by to let you know today that he's worthy to be praised. As I said earlier, regardless who you are, in spite of what you're going through, in spite of what condition you're in, the Bible teaches us to count it all joy. Count it all joy when you fall into divers temptation. Count it all joy when you seem like the world is against you. Count it all joy when you're going through bad times. Count it all joy when it's not good. See, it's easy to count it joy when you're getting what you want. It's easy to count it joy when, when things are going in your direction. It's easy to count it joy when windows and doors keep opening up for you. But he said, count it all joy in all things and always and whatever you're going through, count it all joy. What does that mean? That means to keep on praising God in spite of, regardless of the condition, regardless what it is, who it is. Keep on praising God, because as I said earlier, praising God pays off. You're not going to praise God and nothing is going to happen. When you praise God, things get to moving. When you praise God, wheel in the midst of the wheel begin turning. When you praise God, something begins to happen. So many times. Uh, in our life, God's people, we get off track. We get off track. And meaning that so many times God's people, we lose focus on God. Because when they find themselves going through something, we begin to focus on the problem. We find ourselves going through something, we begin to focus on the person. Somebody there is focusing on the news, focusing on the war, focusing on the pandemic, focusing on all the things that the media put out. But our focus should not be on those things of the world. Our focus should be on the light of the world. Our focus should always be on God. Too many of God's people 
of losing focus and find themselves going through something and they're going through, they reverse their assignment. I like that. They reverse their assignment. And, and, and instead of praising God, they start complaining about their problems. Instead of praising God, they start calling up everybody, telling them about their problem. Start texting everybody, telling them about their problem. Start putting it on Facebook, social media, telling them about their problem. So I say today they reverse their assignment. See, we can't spend that time in social media. We can't spend that time on the phone. We can't spend that time on in text and then talk about we're praising God. Somebody's getting robbed. The Bible says, will a man rob God? He said, yeah, you rob, rob men tithes, you rob men offerings, but we also can rob God in giving him the praises. As I said earlier, instead of praising God, they start sharing their problems. They start sharing what they're going through. Just another plan of the devil. Do you know that's just another plan of the devil? The Bible said, bring your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. The Bible didn't say take your burdens to Facebook. The Bible didn't say take your burdens to texting. The Bible didn't say take your text and your, your problems to all of those out in the world. Learn of me. <laughs> my yoke is easy and my burden are light. Bring your burdens unto the Lord. So what happened is just a, another plan, as I said, another plan of the devil. Through God's message today, he's reminding us that no matter Regardless what you're going through, regardless of what you're facing, regardless of the condition you may be in, God is still counting on your praise. No one is exempt from not praising God, regardless of how long it's been, who you think is the strongest or how long how it got you on lockdown and hold. No one is exempt from giving God praise. God is counting on all of us to give him praise, knowing that your praise is releases blessings your praises releasing blessing when praises go up your blessings come down have you gave god his praises today that's the question you don't have to answer just let me think did i give god his praises today did i give god his praises this morning did you give god his praises last night what about yesterday what about last week last month even last year the Bible said, let, every, let everything that had breath praise ye the Lord. Every day we should be praising the Lord. I hope so. I hope you're giving God his praise that's due unto him. Every day, every day we should give God uh, our praises. Because every day God gives us, God gives us another day to praise him. As I said earlier, regardless who you are, what you think is the most important thing in your life, regardless how long, God, if God gives another day, that's another reason for us to praise him. God gives us so many reasons for us to praise him. A problem we see in the world today, too many of God's people have stopped praising God. Very scary. Too many of God's people have stopped praising God until God give them something, until they want God to do something, until they want God to fix something. We can't use God like that. God deserves all the praise, all the glory. As I said, this is a big problem. Too many of his people have stopped praising God. Too many of God's people have come to a point of, of praising God on certain occasions, certain occasions on receiving certain things from God. We need to know that we have to praise God on a daily basis. We have to praise God in all our walks of today, meaning through the good and the bad through our ups and downs, through our trials and tribulations, even through our storms of life, even when things are not going the way we want it to be, when it seems like we're on the bottom end, we still need to praise God. Even when the world seems against us, even when we feel all alone, nobody but you, you still need to praise God. Psalms 22 and 22 states, I will declare your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise thee. Are we praising God like we should? This message today is a very good message today. Let everything that had breath praise ye the Lord. Are we giving God all the praise and the glory he deserves? Think about it, church. You don't have to answer to me, but this is a personal question you have to ask yourself. Am I praising God like I should? Am I giving God all the praise and glory that he deserves? With so much going on in the world, with so much going on, as I said earlier, and in in as social media avails to us today, it's a question we have to ask ourselves. 
Are we dividing up our time with the world and with God? Are we splitting our praise with the world and with God? A good question today. What is your ratio in praising God? Is it 50-50? Is it 90-10? Is it 70-30? It's a question you need to ask yourself. What is your ratio with the world and praising God? What is your ratio with sharing with others and praising God? Not to single you out, but to help us all move to praising God more and more. We as children of God know that need to know that one of our best ways to drive out Satan out of our lives, away from our families, out of our schools, out of our government, away from our homes, out of our thoughts, and simply out of our way is to praise God. Let me say that again. One of the ways to, to redirect the devil in a different way, get him out of our life, send him in a different way, is to praise God. This is one of the best ways to drive out Satan out of whatever that has entered into our life, whatever ever entered into our family, whatever has entered into our schools, into our homes, into our government, into our church, and yes, even into you and I, is to praise God. What more reasons to praise God? Because the adversary is busy going to and fro. He's on his job. He's doing all that he has on his assignment to do. What more reasons to praise God? When we praise God, our adversaries is redirected in a different way. Thanks be unto God. He has given us the power. He has given us the authority to redirect the adversary in our life. What a blessing. What a blessing today to know that whomever or whatever you're dealing with today, we can praise it away. <laughs> it's very good. Whomever, whatever it is, whatever is on your mind, whatever's been bothering you, whatever's got a hold on you, you can praise it away today. And giving praise to God, our praises can release us from whatever has been holding us down. Thank you, Jesus. And giving praise to God can release us from whoever been holding us down. In the in the book, with that, and yes, we need to know that praising God can break every chain that have us bound in our lives today. I remember the Fisher Girls uh, family singing, uh, Loose Every Chain, in our in Good Hope Baptist Church. And I was reminded of that song today, and we, when I read this, yes, we know that praising God can break every chain that have us bound in our life today. In the book of Acts, chapter 16, is a lesson that goes with our text today. It's a reminder of what praising God can do for us, how praising God can set us free, how praising God can give us a reminder of Acts 6 and 16, verse 16 through 28. As Paul and Silas went from place to place, they was, they was praying and they was healing and they was helping save people that was lost. And, and, and through that, their good works, these people saw their great works, but it wasn't of, a, of their custom. It wasn't of their king. It wasn't of their descendant. And, and, and it wasn't the way that they wanted those people to be healed because many of them was making profit off of those people. And and every, even though people was being healed and saved, the multitude rose up against Paul and Silas. And the Bible said that they became very angry because of their good works. We need to know today that the devil and others get mad and they get angry because of your good work. Somebody's going to get angry because you're trying to do right. Somebody's going to get angry because you're trying to start and give God your life again. As we read the text there in Acts chapter 16, I want you to look. The people became angry because of their good works. In verse 24 states that they became so angry that they had put some charges so severe against them that it caused them to be cast into jail for doing something that was good. Cast it caused them to be cast into prison for doing something that what they thought was wrong, but it was all in good standing. Through their great works, many were saved. Through their great work, many was healed. Many began to believe and be and because of their great works they was thrown into prison. A perfect example for us today that even through our good works, even through our good deeds, our good examples, we will go through some things. Even persecuted for doing good. We are not exempt as a part of our Christian journey. We're gonna be persecuted for doing what's right. 
But the Bible tells us in verse 3, 33 or 23, after they had after they had been there for many, after they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison. And then they gave the jailer a charge. We want you to make sure that you keep a close eye on them. Make sure that they do not get out. So they charge the jailer to keep them safe. The Bible also tells us that they didn't just cast them in jail. It, it, the Bible tells in verse 25 that, and they set a perfect example for us today, even in the midst of being thrown in prison for doing good. At midnight, Paul and Silas, they did something. They did something that we should do every day. They did something what the Bible, our sermon text, tell us today. The Bible sermon text, they let everything that had breath. Praise ye the Lord. The Bible says in verse 25 at midnight, Paul and Silas, they prayed. We ought to be prayed up. We ought to be some prayer warriors. It says not only at midnight, it, they not only they pray, but they also sing praises unto God. See, it's something about prayer and praises. It's something about praising God. And it's something about that midnight hour. We need to praise God in the morning. We need to praise him in the noontime. We need to praise him when the sun go down. And the prisoners and guards, the Bible said they could hear them singing and talking about, uh, and you're talking about when praises go up, blessings come down, through their praising, something happened. Through their praising, something miraculous happened. The Bible says that a great earthquake came, and it was so great that it began to shake the foundation. It was so great that all the 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 doors of the prison was immediately open. And not only were the doors of, of the prison immediately open, I want you to make sure you look at verse 25. It said, everyone bound was loose. Oh, what a perfect book. What a perfect example to let us know today that praising God will pay off. Praising God can set you free. Praising God can loose those chains. Praising God can make a difference in your life. That when praises go up, blessings will come down god is telling us today god is reminding us today and every day to let everything that had breath praise god don't wait for bad times don't wait for difficult situations don't wait for rough things don't wait for bad feelings every day we need to praise ye the lord because praising god is the key to opening up windows praising god is the key to opening up doors in your life if you to see a difference, to make a difference in our life, we need to give God more praises. Huh. To see a difference, to make a difference, to be about a change, we need to give God more praises in our life. Psalms 34, one of my favorite verses that I read every day. And that 34, Psalms 34 go like this. I will bless the Lord at all times. Not sometimes, not every now and then, not when the going get tough, not when I run out, but I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. What a blessing we receive when praising God. What a blessing we receive when we begin to praise God. This morning, church, and moving forward, this day, I want to encourage you and remind you every day to get your praise on. Don't wait for the big thing to come because we're blessed every day. We're blessed with so many small things that we take advantage of we, that we don't even recognize our eyes. That I mean, that we don't take time to see our sight, our hearing, with that God woke us up this morning, our touch, all those small things that we think are guaranteed to us. God blesses us with so many blessings. I want to encourage you, remind you every day to get your praise on. Let somebody think that you're going crazy because you're getting your praise on. What's wrong with him? I'm getting my praise on. Praise him in the morning. Praise him in the noontime. Praise him when the sun goes down. Praise him because he's worthy to be praised. The Bible says worthy is the Lamb of God. Praise him because your praises is the road to loosen up whatever has been holding you down in your life. Your praises is the road to lead to loosen up whatever has bound you in your life. Just like Paul and Silas, I'm so glad. It can't nobody stop us from getting our praise on. 
I'm so glad that prison can't stop us. I'm so glad that people can't stop. I'm so glad that problems can't stop. There's nothing in the world that can stop you and me from getting our praise on. This day and every day, God is reminding us to let everything that had breath praise ye the Lord. Perhaps you have forgotten. Perhaps you have had it, made it a regular schedule. Perhaps you have made it a priority in your life. I'm inviting you today, every day, to get your praise on. Every day, let give God some praise, meaning it's time for you, time for me, to get our praise on. Because as children of God, we have so much to praise God for. <laughs> as children of God, we have so much to praise God for. So much to thank God for. And the good news, God is not through with us yet. God says, I still got more things this afternoon, tomorrow, the next day. As long as you're in the world, uh, land of the living, you have reasons to get your praise on. As I close today, I didn't read to you all of verse 1 through 6, but I close today in reading you verse 1 through 6. Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power up in heaven. Praise him for his mighty acts. God is doing a good thing in your life. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. God is doing things that man can't do. Opening up windows and doors. Pouring out blessings. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psaltery and heart. Praise him with the temporal and dance. Praise him with the string instruments and organs. Praise him on the loud cymbals. Praise him on the high sound. And so we don't have to be quiet in praising God. Whatever we can find, I thought about Louisiana. When you go down, you can see them making music with all different types of instruments. And that's what I thought about when I read this message today. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the psalter. Praise him with the heart. Praise him with the temple. Praise him with the dance. Praise him with string or instruments. String him with or praise him with organs. Praise him on the loud cymbals. I haven't heard no cymbals that you clang together that's quiet. That means we need to make a joyful noise for the Lord. We need to praise him up on the loud cymbals. Let everybody hear you. Don't be ashamed of praising God. Praise him up on the high sounding cymbals. And then finally, let everything that had breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Because praising God changes you. Praises God changes me. Praying and praising God change others. Praising God change things and praising God make all things possible. I invite you to daily get your praise on and every day, every day that you have breath, praise ye the Lord because again, he is worthy to be praised. I pray and trust that you've gotten a mess of thought out of the lesson today. I pray this blessing will not even will only be a blessing that you will hide in your heart, but I invite you to share it with others. So they may see thy good works in you and through God's word that they may begin to glorify our Lord and Savior. May you be enriched, blessed this day, this hour. May God bless you.